This is 25-year-old Rasheem Carter, a father, a brother, a son, and a friend. And this is the mysterious circumstances surrounding his death. If you want to know more about his case, please continue watching. Rasheem Carter was a son, a father, a brother, and a friend to many in his community. He was also an entrepreneur, and he had a restaurant that was named after his daughter, Callie. But unfortunately, during the pandemic, his restaurant closed, and he was determined to get back on his feet and reopen his restaurant because the community really loved his food and the hospitality when they went there. So seeing as he wanted to reopen his restaurant, he had to take odd jobs. And sometimes those odd jobs would take him away from his family. And he, on um, sometime last year, he would call his mother saying that he was being followed by some white men in trucks and he asked his mother if she could come and pick him up um and she sent a family friend but the family friend was not able to come right away um that family friend was only able to come the next day but Rashim's mother said that since he felt like he was being followed she advised him to call the police now, at the time that Rasheem went missing, right before he went missing, he went to a police station and asked two officers for a ride back to his hotel. And they told him that they were unable to give him a ride because it was out of their jurisdiction. And then he pleaded with the officers to please help him because he was being followed by white men in trucks. And they told him that there was nothing that they could do for him. Some parts of this story seem conflicting because one article that I read said that the police officer told him that he could wait in the police station until his ride came to pick him up. And then another article said that the police officer told him that he was not able to wait inside the police station while his ride came to pick him up. So he started walking um, down the road a little ways from the police station. And that is where these men continued to follow him. And then after that, he essentially disappeared until days later where he would be seen on a um, video recording. I think it is of... Um, the recordings like where people um, set up recordings to catch deer during deer season or during the off season and they change out the memory cards every so often. I can't think of what they're called, but he was seen on video camera in the woods. But when you look at the picture, you can clearly see that he's looking for he's looking at someone it looks like in the bushes, but you really can't see anyone. Um, but it, it looks like by his posture and everything, he's in mid stride, but he's also looking at his surroundings. And then a short time, well, not a short time, but um, a little while later after that, Rashid is found or his, shall I say, his remains were found. Um, unfortunately, um, when his remains were found, there were fragments found suggesting that his body had been dismembered. And um, police also say that the state in which his remains were found, it looked like he had been scavenged by uh, animals. And they think or they're saying that he basically just ran into the woods for some unknown reason and just died there. And then the animals started to scavenge on his body, 
which a lot of this stuff, even though I have to say it is allegedly, I'm not buying any of it because a lot of this case does not add up to me. It seems from what I've researched, it seems like he was a part of um, maybe some hate crime or something else because he told his mom that in one of the last conversations that they had before he went missing, he told his mom that he and a co-worker um, had gotten into an argument and the co-worker is trying to have people kill him. And he said that um, they're trying to have people kill me because I'm too smart. So my theory is something entirely different, you know, um, I mean, it could be a um, combination of multiple theories that I have, but this is um, part of the first one. Since this was a job that he was working involving construction at the time to save up money to earn to reopen his restaurant, I feel like he wanted to do his best that he could do so he could, you know, not only get money to reopen his restaurant, but seen as a serious worker. But he somehow stumbled upon something that the company was doing that was, you know, harmful during the construction, like cutting corners and using like, um, hazardous materials or not using the proper materials to complete the job and he probably was you know having it out with his co-workers and even the man who was his boss at the time um because he felt like that might be wrong or it could have been some kind of you know financial scam or scheme that they were running and they wanted to get rid of him before he could tell anyone about what was going on. Because, of course, if someone is found to be running a company and not doing it in the legal way or the best way, that could ruin business for them. Now, it is also said that he had a roommate at the hotel which he was staying at, which is the Super 8 Motel in that area. Um, and those hotels are usually for people who are traveling and just need a place to crash while they're in town doing work or on a business trip, things like that, things like what he was doing. And also, you know, business, business people who are just going to be there for a night and then they check out the next day. Um, you know, all kinds of people come through there. Um, but he was at this hotel with a roommate and somehow he and the roommate got into a fight about what nobody is certain because I could not find the roommate. I couldn't find his name in any of the articles that um, I searched um, so that I could give you a name. But apparently um, Raheem's mother, I think she had, had, I mean, um, sorry, Rasheen's mother has the name of, I believe it's his boss or his roommate um, in some of the text messages that he exchanged with her before he went missing. Um, but she has not given that out um, yet. And I think, you know, that might be because of legal reasons or what have you. But I um, it was said that he and his roommate got into a fight and the roommate left him in an area and told him, you know, I know you rode here with me, but, you know, you can't ride back with me, I guess, because they had, had the argument. You know how it goes sometimes. Somebody can be mad at you and say, well, this is my car. If you want to do this or do that, you find your own way back home or back to the hotel or whatever the case may be. And so that is how Rasheen got stuck in the position that he was left in, unfortunately. And my question now is to the roommate. Now that you know this man is deceased and he has possibly been a part of a hate crime, how do you feel about leaving this man, you know, to walk back to the hotel that you all shared? Um, because it was also said that 
the roommate told him that he couldn't even um, be roommates with him anymore. So he, uh, Rashim, had to find his own room as well. But I wonder now, with this man knowing that, you know, Rashim is deceased and it's possibly because he left him to walk back to the hotel, how does he feel about this? But, um, unfortunately, guys, that brings me to the end of this first part of the video. Um, and I will continue the story in part two. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Um, please leave me a comment down in the comment section below on what you think about this case. And does anything seem strange to you? If you're not already subscribed, please make sure you subscribe. And until next time, guys, thanks for watching and I'll see you on the next one.